Hello. Well, if you watch previous videos, you'll know that I'm working on the, the 411. And what I'm gradually doing is converting it from its original specification. It was originally a snowblower um, into an agricultural specification. So part of that process is fitting three point linkage. So that's what I want to talk you through and show you what I've been doing. So we're looking at the 421 here. But the reason being is I want to show you the three-point linkage on the back because the setup on the 411 is identical. Well, it is on a late 411, which is what I've got. So I think what I might need to do is get some additional light and just talk you through the setup. So hopefully this is a bit, a bit better. We can see what's going on. So some 411s have this set up, but there's a top link, which in this case is on the um, bolted onto the tow hitch on the back. So it's slightly different on the other vehicle. But what is the same is things like these mounts on the rear axle for um, the lift arms. We've got the check chains bolted onto brackets that go onto the rear hubs. Um, we can adjust the height of the of the linkage from here, and then there's a a lift bar and frame that bolts to the top of the chassis, which uses hydraulic rams, a pair of hydraulic rams to push it up. It's probably a bit hard to see. So. What I managed to purchase in Germany is you can get a complete kit to fit three-point linkage onto the 421 or the 411. Um, actually, this isn't the complete kit. I'm not showing all of it. The bottom links and things are still on the pallet, pallet in the back of the workshop, but you've just seen the equivalents on the 421. So what we've got here with this kit is a bracket that goes in the chassis rail. And this allows us to mount hydraulic ram. There's a pair of those. There's one missing over there because I've already fitted it to the 411. I'll show you in a moment. A pair of rams. The earlier versions of the vehicle only had a single ram. Later ones were twin rams. 421 was always twin rams. I don't know if it, actually I don't know if it was always twin rounds, but um, here's the lift frame that we've just seen on the back of the green Unimog top link. This is where the bottom lift arms connect onto, so these brackets bolt onto the rear axle, and these are the brackets that bolt onto the hubs around they look like that when they're bolted on with the check chains hook on to um, and then in the kit there's smaller components so uh, there's these pins which go through the rams so we've got um, pivot points for the rams um, comes with all sorts of nuts and bolts ready to fit various hydraulic hoses more nuts and bolts. Um, so it's pretty comprehensive as a kit. Um, I'll put a link uh, below this video so you can see who the supplier is, where I got it from. So if we have a look at the 411, I've tipped the body up just so we can, uh, also I can get access underneath while I'm fitting everything. And the bit of wood there is just a safety prop, really, a very basic safety prop. But if you look here, you can probably see I've got one of the brackets in already. It's maybe a little bit hard to see. You can see it in, in there. So that slides inside the chassis rail. There are various bolt holes on that bracket. And some of them, if we look on this side, which I've been working on, pick up on existing bolt holes. So the battery box here, um, picks up on its uh, mounts. We can pick up on the mounts for the 
um, subframe for the rear body. Um, I've only had to drill one hole in the vehicle chassis rail. This is this one. I thought it might be a bit of a nightmare to drill, but actually it was okay. Uh, it's, um, it's mild steel, so it's not too bad to drill. And on the brackets, if we go back to the brackets again, what I've tried to do there is, um, rather than drill the chassis rail on the vehicle, is where it's necessary I've drilled this bracket for two reasons. One, because I don't want to be drilling too many holes in the chassis. Uh, and two, because I can get this on the pillar drill um, and um, just have much better access for, for modifying this in various ways. Um, this is where the uh, mount for the battery box goes. And what I discovered is that these holes were not in the quite, quite the right locations. I've had to make them lozenge shape with a file. But apart from that, had, these are two additional holes I've had to drill. These holes here, this is designed to clear the bolt head um, for one of the mounts for the rear body. And I'm picking up this hole as well um, for mounting. So this takes thrust, well, in either direction. It's a double acting ram for either lifting or pushing down the three point linkage. Uh, at the moment, I think five bolts, they're 10 mil bolts, high tensile bolts, should be enough in, taking, in terms of taking that load. Um, I don't need to use every single bolt hole on here. Things like this hole here on the um, 421, when it's fitted to that, there's a big pin that goes through there that also mounts the uh, spider frame, the rear subframe on the body. That's not used on the 411. So these are universal. These um, fit both. May They do need a little bit of modification, but not massively. So there is a little bit of drilling involved, but they're a pretty good fit. Didn't come with any instructions. It's one of the reasons I'm doing the video, if anybody wants to fit them. But also, obviously, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have the uh, 421. And I can use that to work out where everything goes and take dimensions from. Another part I've already fitted is these pillow bearings that go on the end of the lift arm. There's a bearing that you have to push fit into there. There's a rubber O-ring that goes inside. And then that's push fitted onto this lift arm which is very substantial it weighs an absolute ton um, but that's reassuringly heavy given what it's got, got to do because there's a lot of leverage on this when you've got it under load I mean it's going to lift I think it's rated at a ton and a half something of that sort uh, and it's a very short stroke here so there's a lot of load on this short arm um, but it is very substantially made now the great thing on the, on the Unimog well, on all Unimogs really, but um, is that all the bracketry is already there when they were designed and built. Um, even though they might be used for different specifications, like this one being used as a snowblower, it still had all the holes in the right place uh, and mounting brackets and things, or uh, parts of the mounting brackets for things like three-point linkage. So if we come around and look at the back of the vehicle, these are the bolt holes for the pillar mount for where the cross frame goes, for example. And it's things like, um, because there's a step here, because of this rear cross member, there's a spacer already welded onto the chassis. So a lot of things were done in the factory on the assumption that the vehicle specification, wait for the vehicle to go by, uh, the vehicle specification could vary. You know, um, and not only vary when it was built, but vary over its life, just like it is for me. Um, so, this hydraulic ram, because this was a snowblower, it didn't have a tipper body on the rear. It had a great big donkey engine bolted in the back. But the mounts for having a tipper, that was all there. So it was very easy just to drop this ram on. Similarly, the hydraulics, the spool valve, um, is all there in the cab when I get to the point where I'm fitting the hydraulics for the, uh, the hydraulic hoses and things for um, the three-point linkage. I'll show you all that. 
similarly, if we look under the vehicle, that's the mount for the crossbar for the um, bottom links. Uh, the other side picks up on two of these long bolts that go through the diff. And the interesting thing is when you look at it, it's probably hard to see, I could do some more light. Um, there's a spacer here, uh, and that's they're ready. That means those bolts are over length, you can take the spacer off and the bracket goes on there. Um, the mounts for the check chains, they pick up on some of the bolts on the rear hub here. So it's all been really well thought through in terms of how everything fits on here and whether it is fitted to a particular vehicle or not. Mine at the moment doesn't have a PTO, this is where the PTO shaft would come out of. Um, but I have got the PTO gearbox ready to fit. But at the moment, I'm just going to focus on the three-point linkage in a later video. I'll uh, show fitting the, um, the PTO gearbox and the shaft and things. So, that's what I'm up to. Let's carry on. So, the bracket has the potential to be a bit of a water trap. Um, so, to reduce chances of corrosion, I'm going to paint this with well, cover it with copper grease. That will um, mean that it should reduce the chances of corrosion. And also, if I ever need to get it out again, it should come out much more easily. So hopefully this will just slide in now. Just want to be careful, I, I've got electrical cables for the um, wiring harness. Just want to be careful I don't trap anything like that. So because um, the bolts at the front in the lo lozenge shaped holes sit um, so close to the chassis rail, I've just taken the edge off a washer, just flattened it, so it sits in there flush when the bolt's done up. So when you put these rams in, these are handed as well because of the ports for the hydraulic cylinder. So it's important you get them in the right way around. Otherwise, some of this framework in the chassis is going to block where the ports need to go. Okay, so it takes a little bit of thought. Uh, there's no grease nipples on the pivot points on the rams either. So I'm just going to put some copper grease on them. They're a fairly a loose fit anyway. So in terms of maintenance, it will probably be a drop of oil on these pins. Um, hopefully they won't suffer from getting too much grit and rubbish in there over time. We'll see. So you can probably see that's where the fork on the end of the hydraulic ram is. Got to get a pin in there yet. Pillar bearing sits on here. Wanted to make sure this wiring wasn't going to get trapped anywhere. I might have to reroute it, but for the moment that's okay. Not quite lined up here, but exactly the same principle on this side. So I think I'll drop the bolts in just loosely and get these cross pins in for the rams and see how it's all looking.
this is the bracket that holds on the um, check chain, um, which bolts to the hub, which has basically gone all right. But if we look up from underneath, you can see uh, there's a gap here. There's a bolt that goes through there. There's a gap here. So I think probably what I'm going to have to do is cut this bracket off, bolt it up against this bracket on the axle, tack weld it, remove it, weld it up properly. On the other side, we also have a gap. Um, the axle widths on the 421 and 411 are different. So it's got to fit back on the 421. There's a big spacer that goes in there. But this seems to be parallel with the bracket. So I think uh, I can probably pack that out with washers. I'll try the other bracket first. And we'll see. So we now have this gap. I didn't cut it off entirely. I thought it might, because I knew it was touching at this end. So I've left a, a little bit of the weld there um, and just levered it out. I've now bolted it up. It's been bolted up here as well. So this gap should now be right. Um, so I'll take it apart, do a tack weld, try it again. Um, and then if that looks to be okay, I'll weld it up fully. So if you're wondering what the wing span is for, it's just to keep the gap right, because it'll be inclined to contract slightly. So while it's cooling, it'll keep it in the right place. So this is just going to be a tack weld really to begin with. bracket welded up and painted. Possibly not the prettiest welding, but it's functional. Um, on the other side, I'm going to try it and just make a spacer that goes in this gap in here. And when I put the uh, top link bracket on, there's a couple of brackets that become redundant. You take these off, don't need them anymore. That we're sitting on like that. But I'm thinking this, this is nearly the right width with a little bit of grinding. I think I can make this the spacer. It's already got a convenient hole as well that I can put the clamping bolt through. So I don't think I need to do any welding because it's parallel uh, on the right hand side of the vehicle already, that gap. Um, so I'll modify this and I can see if I can make that fit. fit. But first of all I'm going to put the welded brackets back on and see if that's okay. So there we are, the bracket is on, the gap is gone. And it's all bolted. So I'm happy with that. And the other side in the as well. And that's the spacer just there to take up that gap. So the brackets for the check link chains I think are in. So everything is now fitted, the rams, the bracket tree, uh, the lift frame, top link bracket, lower link arm bracket, check, train, check chain brackets. Um, so next thing to think about is the hydraulics. So the kit comes with these hoses and connectors and all that's really gonna allow me to do is um, the two rams running parallel 
so it's just an interlink hoses between the two. I don't have the hoses yet to run through to the spool valve. Sorting out the hydraulics properly will come in part two. So I'll leave you with some video I took at Unimol Museum of this rather beautifully restored long wheelbase 411 with three-point linkage. So hopefully in the next episode, mine will be starting to look more like that.